Hi, everybody. Um, last time, remember that we uh, started the uh, magnetic fields and uh, magnetic forces. Uh, okay. Uh, the first thing that we uh, discussed last time was that uh, the Lorentz force included two uh, parts, one due to the electric field and the other one due to the magnetic field. And we learned that the magnetic force, which is this second term, uh, is zero when the velocity is zero. But when uh, you have just charge around, uh, the electrical force is always there. But the magnetic, in order to get the magnetic force, you need to have not only magnetic field, but also the charge should move in the magnetic field. Otherwise, uh, it experiences no force. So we, we learned that usually the charge uh, follows the magnetic field lines, but doing spiral motions. Okay, so if we look into a wire, okay, look into a wire, uh, suppose the charge is moving with uh, some kind of velocity, V drift velocity, actually electrons are moving with the same velocity, but we assume that plus charge is moving just to make the calculations simpler. In this case, uh, the force on, 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 the uh, on the charge is given by QVB. Okay, sine theta, if th there is a magnetic field. Suppose that this is the magnetic field given externally, applied externally applied magnetic field. In this case, we have this force uh, on, uh, on this charge moving in the wire though. If the charge is feeling the force, maybe all the other charges are all feeling the same force so that the whole cable will feel the force. This is really interesting. But now what we would like to do is that, uh, remember that the number density in a wire with a, a surface area A and length L is given by number divided by the volume, right, volume. This is number divided by A times D because surface area of the cable is A and the length is L and then the volume is A times L, obviously. So, sorry, this is L. So the number uh, n is equal to density times a times l. Also, we know that if there is a current moving in this wire, there is also current density, which is i over a. And the current density is just q v drift times magnetic field. Sorry, q, uh, the current density is given by q v d uh, times uh, n, right? n q v d, n, small n. So, see, this is the current density. So now, if we would like to write this force, then it's uh, q. This is the force on one electron, but for the total force, I need n times of this force. So q v sine theta, but uh, n is n times a l. So here. I, I've written this again. Q V B sine theta is there. Q V e, B drift velocity, of course, sine theta. Okay. Now look at this. Q N times Q V D is just the current. So this one, this one, and that one. The product of this is J. So it's J times A L. What is the rest? B sine theta. From here, you see that G J A is uh, just current because the the, the property this is I uh, L B sine theta. But since this is a vector, okay, and sine theta shows us that this is the vector product, we can write this as F as uh, I L cross B. Okay, so this is the magnitude of this vector product. So uh, the force is uh, really perpendicular to the uh, the current and the magnetic field play. This is what's happening. Now, look what happens. If the current is this way and magnetic field is that way, okay, uh, I cross B is outside the page. So I'm not putting any vector sign, okay? Uh, L is also this way. L is that way. So it's not I, but L actually. But now, if the current is this way, for instance, and the magnetic field is downward, let's say, so uh, the current is this way, and magnetic field, the I cross B, okay, 
I cross B is since this is uh, I cross B will be this way. So this is force direction. So this is force or I cross B. So now what happens is that when you have this plane, this force will be perpendicular to that one. And this force will be perpendicular to this plane. Uh, okay. So always perpendicular, right? So now this uh, force, since this force is feeling uh, in upward force, the total, uh, the total uh, wire will try to go up. Okay. Like this, it will be lifted. But here, this wire that is carrying this current will be uh, pushed to the right like that. Okay. So uh, always keep this in mind that uh, the direction of the force is always perpendicular to the uh, current and magnetic field uh, plane. So in this example, uh, of course, uh, when you have when you have a little segment uh, of uh, this uh, wire, uh, okay, then uh, okay, then the force on this is given by DF will be given by just I times DL cross B. Okay, so now this is DL DQ inside DL. This uh, this DL vector is the unit vector length vector in the direction of the current, and of course there is a magnetic field somewhere. So in this case, a little force on this little segment is given by this thing. And in order to get the total force, you have to integrate. So F is just integration of I dl cross B. You know, this is something that uh, keeping, uh, it's, it's nice to keep in mind in, in solving some problems. And uh, by using this uh, property, we solve a problem in which uh, the current is flowing through this way and given value is 50 amperes and magnetic field is sideways magnetic field and the intensity is approximately 1.2 tesla which is a high magnetic field by the way and the angle that uh, this current and this current direction and magnetic field is making is 45 degrees okay and we assume that uh, it's about one meter so the length of this wire is about uh, L equals one meter. So in this case, in this case, we, we see that uh, we see that uh, the force is given by uh, I times uh, L B L B times sine theta, which is 45 degrees. So 50 times one meter is just one times B 1.2 sine of 45 degrees or just pi over four. In this case, we find that this force is just 42 Newton, 42.4 Newton, okay? So what is direction of the uh, uh, force? It's this way, right? It's this way. So uh, basically, if you put these uh, things, uh, this is east, north, say this is, x and this is y okay y the magnetic field lies on uh, x y plane as you see x y plane uh, and now the force is in z direction this direction always because the plane is when the current and the magnetic field lies on this is the table plane and of course i cross b is just going to be offered by using right hand rule because this is i and this is b right I and B. Okay, using right hand rule, we can see that it's upper. Anyway, this is, uh, if you write this as force in uh, vector form, it will be like that. Good. So now we, we saw that by 50 amperes, we can lift up to four kilograms, uh, okay, uh, because this is kilogram Newton, uh, right? This is the force, not the weight. Uh, this is the weight, but not the mass. The mass that we can carry is going to be 4.2 kilograms with this. So now let's solve another problem. In this problem, we have this segment, okay? The current is going inside from this side and going through this loop and then going to the left. This is semicircle, okay? And the radius is R. Now, if you look at this uh, from this side, this is what we see. Right, 
We see this like that. Okay. So the current is coming uh, this way, and magnetic field now is in upward direction. Okay. Magnetic field is outside. Okay. Like this. It means that it's like that, right? Magnetic field direction is in upward direction. Now, this is, uh, we just write these segments. Uh, segment number one, segment number two, segment number three. And segment number one, uh, the current is passing through this way, and it's this way, and that way. Okay? Magnetic field. Good. So, sorry, if the magnetic field is this way, uh, it will be perpendicular. So it's not uh, in, like, in this direction like that, but it will be in uh, this uh, direction, right? So B will be in this direction, right? Okay, because we are looking at from this side. When we look at from this side, we see this uh, wire as a point and the uh, magnetic field is towards us. Exactly. So this is the direction of the magnetic field. Now, uh, obviously, the force on the first segment is uh, equal to zero because uh, uh, the current direction, the current I, okay, this is the current, this is the current, the current and magnetic field are parallel to each other, right? The angle is zero degrees, so sine theta is zero. So no, no force on this segment. What about this segment? Now, if you look at here carefully, this is the current direction. This is the magnetic field direction. Okay. And I cross B, I cross B will be in uh, upper direction. So the force on this uh, uh, wire will be in this direction. So F3. Here, zero. What about here? What about here? Ah, in order to analyze this part, uh, this is easy because since uh, the current and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other like this, see, this is the direction of the magnetic field and it's perpendicular. And uh, actually, the current and also the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. So sine 90 is 1. So that F equals, is if this segment length is given by L, just I L B. That's it. So this is F3. The magnitude of F3 is I L B. What about this uh, round segment? So let's draw it. Let's draw it like this. Okay, in detail. Now let's analyze this. Okay, so um, now if we put these x's like that, this is x, this is y, okay, then we have d theta here, dq, and then there is dl, small length, small length dl. We have to really consider this, uh, the current uh, flowing through uh, uh, this loop. Since the current is flowing through here, this DL that we consider will be like that. And also here, it will be like this on the other side. Okay? So on the other side is like that. On this side is like this. So now if this is theta, then uh, this angle is D theta inside. This little angle is just d theta, d theta, okay? So now, uh, this small angle d theta, uh, not seen very carefully, let's try this here. This is angle d theta inside. But this dl, if you look at this from geometry, if this is a d theta and this is r, uh, this is dl, the length is approximately dl, uh, it is given as r d theta, right? Don't forget, dl is given by r d theta. Now, what about the force on this little segment with uh, this little dl distance? Now, the uh, current is this way, and magnetic field uh, is, look at here, downward, and the current is this way. I, uh, no, this upward, i cross b is in upper direction, right? So, so it will be like this. The force will be always central. Okay, so if we have this, we 
connect to center and this will be the direction of the forces always right so this will be df df vector now df vector has two components dfx dfx and dfy let me show you here here on this side we have this force which has two components and on the symmetric part of it exactly the same angle we have this force and now upper and uh, left components as you, as you see the uh, x components will cancel each other okay so each point on the right side of this circle will cancel by the equivalent counterpart because of this but y components will cancel they will survive so uh, then we have to get y component okay which uh, df y which is just df times uh, be careful with the angle since this is angle theta this is also theta it's just sine theta right you have to multiply df by sine theta in order to okay in order to uh, get the total force in y direction surprisingly this segment of the wire also has the force in y direction so uh, but what we will see is that the whole cable system will just try to go up although it's funny looking shape it's not only in one dimension, you know, it's like on one plane, but uh, all these different directions just uh, appear. The whole system tries to go up in uh, Y direction. But in order to get uh, FY in segment, uh, curve segment, you have to integrate this. So it's DF times sine theta. But what about DF? What is DF? How can we write DF here? It's just I times DL okay times b remember that i l b i d l b but instead of dl i write r d theta so it's just i r b instead of dl i write r d theta so basically it's just i b r d theta but there is sine theta to be written first and then d theta now, now the angles you have to be careful because if you say that this is my angle theta starting from this part it moves from zero to pi which is 180 degrees from zero to pi. So now this uh, integration, all the rest of the quantities are constant. You can take this outside and the rest gives you sine theta, d theta, which gives you minus cosine theta. If you put these two limits, the cosine theta is minus one for uh, pi and one for uh, zero. And if there is a minus sign, you can subtract these two negative numbers, which gives you minus two. And if you multiply by the minus sign, you get just two. So this uh, geometrical factor just brings uh, about two. So that uh, in the curve segment, Fy will be just two times pi br. And then uh, this is in uh, curve segment. Okay, this is curve segment. Uh, but also we had this F3, uh, which is ILB, Okay, in the y direction again. So the total force on whole wire is then written vectorally ILB plus 2IBR, okay, times uh, J unit vector, right? In, in, in y direction. So this is the result, guys. Interesting. <clears throat> okay, now let's uh, try to understand force and torque. On a current loop. This is the basics of uh, motors. Because if you put a loop of current in a magnetic field, then incredible uh, things happen. Automatically, some kind of torque is created. Let me show you how it is done, right? So now, suppose that we have this x and y directions like that. I try to draw this as uh, better as possible. So this is x and this is y, okay? And this is z. Z direction is this, this direction, X, Y, Z, right? Obeying the right hand rule. 
z is not unworked because x cross y should give you z, right? Good. So this is uh, the direction. Now, uh, if you look at here, this is the plane that is made by uh, x, y plane. This is just the x, y plane. So I'm just drawing this uh, as much as parallel so that you realize uh, what plane we are talking about. Now, we, I would like to place some kind of uh, loop on this uh, plane, but tilt a little bit like this, okay? Now, if you con combine this, as you see, this is uh, tilted up with an angle phi, okay? Now, of course, earlier, z direction was uh, the also area vector, but now the area vector of this is tilted, okay? So now this is tilted to the loop. Uh, this is uh, tilted and this angle is phi again, okay? This is 90 degrees to the loop. So the current is flowing this way in this loop, by the way. Actually, if there is no gap, if there is no gap between the two wires, it's not easy to create this kind of rotating current because all the potentials will be the same and there will be no current flowing through. So the, the pictures in the book is wrong, though. So you need uh, some kind of uh, connection, uh, some kind of uh, connection to the power supply. Otherwise, the current cannot flow. Suppose this is a short circuit, just like they draw on the books, right? In this case, all the potentials on the wire are the same, and if the potential uh, on both sides of the resistance is the same, no current flows. If VA is equal to VB, then no current, right? Obviously, it's impossible to keep a rotating current if uh, these, uh, all these points are connected. It's impossible. You can create these currents by changing magnetic flux and so something like that. We will see this magnetic induction case, but not in this case because the magnetic field that we are uh, we have is just a constant magnetic field in totally z direction. Okay, so the magnetic field that we apply is in the z direction here, probably obtained from neodymium magnets in z direction. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at this uh, case, then on this side, on this side, the force will be in uh, this way. This way. And the force on this side will be that way. And it will have both X and Y components. Okay? This. This. This is X and Y components of these forces. How did I... Uh, find out these forces direction. It's simple because, uh, for instance, on this side, the current is flowing through this way and the magnetic field is that way. So I cross B is outside, basically. That's it. It's outside. But now, since it is tilted, it, it's not totally in uh, X or Y direction, but it's tilted a little bit so that X direction is making an angle uh, 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 phi with this, right? So uh, now what happens is that we have we have now uh, these forces these forces can each other because this force, the X component of forces, this is Fx and this is Fx. So this is Fx and this is F by the way. I'm just putting this F vector to the tip of this vector. Fx is this way. They cancel each other because uh, this force is, is trying to pull the uh, cable to the right, and this force is a, x component of this force is pulling the uh, cable, the whole loop to the left. They cancel each other. But what about this part? What about Fy? So look at this Fy, and look at this Fy. Okay. So this force is trying to lift the right side of the loop, but this Fy is downward, so that it's pushing down or just pulling down this uh, part of the loop. So if you put some kind of uh, loop here and then connect to the ground like that, the whole thing will try to rotate because of these forces. What about the side forces? What about here? 
Now, we, if you just, just check the directions of the current and also magnetic field, you see that this uh, is going to, the force will be in this way. For this part, the force is going to be exactly in opposite direction and they will cancel each other. And it's easy to write this force because it's just, uh, I need to know the distances, by the way. This is B, this is B, and this is A. This force is just, this force is just I times B times IB uh, uh, times magnetic field, right? But what about this force? This force here is exactly I A B because the distance is A. So F here, F equals here I A B. That's it. But not the X and Y components. So I have to multiply this by uh, sine theta or sine phi in our case because the angle uh, happens to be phi instead of theta. Okay. So to get uh, the total of force, okay, you have to multiply. Uh, in y direction, you have to multiply it by sine theta. So Fy will be equal to I A B sine alpha. Okay? So sine phi, sorry. <laughs> theta, alpha, phi. Anyway, which one? Phi. Okay. So we have this uh, y component of the force. Uh, okay? I A B sine phi. But now... Uh, Sine phi. So what about the torque, though? So now let's look at here. Now let me draw a cent center line like this, through which we have these uh, this Fy and uh, Fy. So look at here. We have this Fy there and Fy there, right? This is Fy in the right side, and Fy is in, on the left side at the center line of this. Uh, okay, of this loop that I will draw like that. So as you see, now we uh, <coughs> we need to get uh, exactly 90 degrees of this in order to get the torque, okay, like that. So that this is Fy times, uh, Fy times, um, this is, Fy, which is 90 degrees already, right? We, we found, right? This is it. This is 90 degrees already. Okay? We don't need to find any other force uh, direction because it's just the perpendicular. So what about the torque? Torque is force times arm length, but since this is B, this is just B over 2, right? B over 2. In this case, the torque is Fy times B over 2 from this one, and from this one, another Fy b over 2. But Fy being this. Okay? Fy being this. So now, um, so as you see, these are the same expression, so it is just Fy times b, right? So torque is just twice as much as Fy b over 2, which is Fy b. Now, if you multiply this by uh, Fy, you get a i times a b, because there was a, then I used b there. Because I will show that this is just the area. Okay? So area, which is A, is equal to AB. Because this side is A. This side is A, basic. This area of this rectangle. Okay, rectangular loop. So a, there is B also there and also sine phi. Now look, this isn't this area? So torque is I, A, B, sine phi. Now, uh, we just assume that this is like a magnetic moment. So this is just a new definition. Magnetic. Magnetic moment. Okay. So now, uh, as you see, this torque happens to be just mu uh, times B times sine phi. So this shows that it's the cross product between mu and B. So uh, the torque that is created on this wire, okay, is given by just the torque is just mu cross b. It's, a, it's the cross product because there is sine phi there. So now wh what's happening? Let's show the direction of the uh, torque. Okay, so uh, now suppose that we have this kind of loop. The current is flowing through here. 
and say that there is a magnetic field in this direction, like that. Externally created magnetic field. Somehow we put some magnets on both sides of this wire loop. Of course, the loop should have some kind of empty space so that it's connected to the battery. But now, uh, the thing is that if there is a rotation like this, it will uh, now this whole segment will just go and uh, be perpendicular to the plane. Let me show you how it is done. Okay, like this. Suppose that we have this current like this, right? Current loop. I'm just drawing current loop like that. Okay, probably something here. Remember that it was not like that, but shifted a little bit. So now because of this force, this side will go up and this side will go down. And then the whole thing will be reaching this this uh, angle. And the angle will be totally uh, 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 90 degrees. Sin phi is 90. Okay, this sine phi is 90 degrees. So it's a maximum torque. We have maximum torque there. Okay, but now, uh, at this moment, at this moment, we have maximum torque. But now what happens is that these forces that uh, pulls this right uh, uh, side up and left side down will be like this and like that. Okay, will be in upper and lower direction, right? It means that they will cancel each other, right? Right on the top. However, they cannot. Why? They cancel each other. Exactly true. But there is an inertia because this whole thing will move and then it cannot stop there because it is an inertia. It will go just a little bit side to the as soon as it goes to the left side, it will feel again these uh, these forces, this one up and the other one down. And then they will be like that. So when perpendicular, we have this. And as you see, this will keep rotating and then you will have these kind of forces. Okay, just trying to move the whole thing down. Of course, you have to really fix, put something here and then maybe some needle or something like that so that this, this can rotate. Otherwise, if the wire is just uh, sitting there, if you apply this force, it just does this, you know, it just goes to an arbitrary direction. But if you just fix this from, from these loops here, this part, then you will you will create some kind of rotation like that and it will be continuous it's interesting isn't it so you apply a current and there is a magnetic field and the whole thing rotates so this is the basics of motor if you can create a stable magnetic field probably using permanent magnets and give the current to a, a wire loop then automatically some kind of force is created look at here look at here now as you see the current is this way and magnetic field is that way. I cross B, I cross B uh, is going to be probably uh, up or down depending on this side. Let's look at this side, for instance. Now, the magnetic field is this way. The current is this way. I cross B, uh, okay, uh, it's like this. I uh, cross B sideways. This is current actually rotating, but I'm just thinking this the upward direction. So here the force is upward. What about this other side? The other side, now the current is this way and the magnetic field is that way and it's going to be the current, okay? The current is this way, but the magnetic field is that way. So I have to do this, right? Otherwise, I cannot really uh, get this direction. So on this uh, side, the force will be downward, but on this side, the force will be upward, as you see. So now, what happened? The resulting forces on both sides, or the, our side and also the, the other side, okay, front or back, okay, uh, the forces direction will be in opposite direction. Now, if we are smart enough, we can put some holders here and then rotate this, uh, this uh, thing. But now, uh, instead of putting, because remember that the total torque depends on how much current is passing through this. But now instead of this, I can put N windings like this. N windings, suppose N windings. N windings means this. Suppose that you run, this is number one, this is number two, number three, number four, it's like that. So number of windings, number of 
rotate, rotate, rotating wires. So if number of windings is there, the torque is nothing but equal to n times mu cross v. Okay, you have to multiply uh, the total torque on a, on a one single loop by number of n, which is number of windings. You can increase the torque. Wow, it's interesting, right? Instead of putting one uh, loop, you can put many many loops like this, and then maybe the first tip is here, and then after rotating this uh, on a maybe rectangular box or something like that. You know, instead of this round, you can uh, round this, uh, these cables on a rectangular box like this, you know, right? Same thing, doesn't matter, right? Either curved or uh, uh, rectangular, doesn't matter. So uh, after winding this, uh, you can just get rid of this paper uh, or uh, ca cartoon or something like that, or just keep it there because they are not magnetic. As far as you don't use any uh, metal here, then you can wind it to anything. Maybe like plastic or some paper, some other stuff, whatever. In this case, the whole thing will rotate, and this will. This is the basics of. Uh, this is the basics of motors. It's really interesting. And now, uh, in uh, this uh, example, uh, in in the example in the book, they say that the magnetic field applied is 1.2 tesla, and the angle between. The angle between the current uh, angle between uh, actually it's the angle is not given but it, it's just uh, given uh, it's just uh, this way so windings is this way and the magnetic field is th that way and number of turns is thirty okay and the, no uh, the current that they give is about five amperes the current is five amperes by the way each one of these loops carrying five amperes because Remember that you create this current from a power supply. The same current, 5 amperes, is flowing through and then round and round and coming back again as 5 amperes. So it's always 5 amperes for all the loops. This is the reason that we multiply the whole expression by 30. In this case, we find that, okay, and they also give the radius, uh, radius being uh, 0 0.05 meters or just 5 centimeters. Radius is 5 centimeters and area is just given by the area is pi r squared. So if, if all this stuff, we can see that the magnetic moment, which is just the current times the area, the current is given a, the area is pi r squared, is given by 1.18 amperes meter squared. This is the unit of this, by the way, meter squared. And then the total torque is, I don't have to calculate the force. I don't need it. So uh, all I uh, need is the torque, amount of torque. So the torque will be n times, which is 30 times magnetic moment, which is 1.18 times uh, uh, magnetic field. They say that the magnetic field intensity is 1.2 Tesla. Okay, let me check again. Yes, the magnetic field is 1.2 Tesla. If you multiply this 1.2, you find the torque being just equal to 141, 1.41 Newton's meter, Newton, Newton's meter, okay? So basically we calculate the total torque on this current loop. So now if this was only one loop, it would be uh, one third of this thing. So it uh, for one loop, for one loop, torque is 141 divided by 30 which is a very small number, by the way. So just a little loop. But instead of this small torque, you can create a bigger torque so that you can carry more weight because sometimes uh, the motors are used to pull the weights up, you know, like that. The motor is usually connected to a mile uh, or uh, some kind of shaft, okay, so that it rotates like that. In order to carry uh, uh, bigger weights, you need to create more torque in order to create more torque, you need more and more windings, okay? And also, the wires that you are using here uh, in creating these windings uh, should be thick enough so that it can accommodate high currents. Otherwise, if you use thin wire, then the amount of the current that you can sh uh, carry in these windings will be limited, right? Okay, this is the end of this uh, part two. Uh, next time we will see part three and we will really get into the de details of the electric motors and you will really understand the importance of the magnetic field if there is a current. So if there is a current then 
magnetic field, you can create some nice stuff. Okay. So magnetic field, as you see, is really uh, more important than the electric field. Although all of them is important, if you are considering the magnetic electromagnetic radiation, it is just uh, electric and magnetic field moving together. Okay. So that when when you have energy in uh, when you have energy exchange between electric field and the magnetic field, then there is some oscillations that you can create, and we will see that. There are some RC oscillations, uh, okay, and LC oscillations. If there is an inductor which uh, uses the magnetic field, and also capacitance which uses the electric field, if you just connect this to uh, a circuit, you will see that there is so some oscillations, and the frequency related to the inductance value, which is L, and also the capacitance value, which is uh, C, right? So resonant frequency will be just square root of one over LC or something like that. We will see this hopefully. By the end of this uh, this semester, if we have enough time, though. Okay, so this is the end of today's recording, guys. So I hope that you enjoyed again. Uh, but I will just load my YouTube videos uh, 